Hello. Today uh, we will check a very interesting topic, one of my favorite topics actually. Um, how we will mix and play with video textures in Blender uh, to create video art. Uh, for this I prepared several examples. Um, you can see them now simultaneously running. Um, the really nice thing in Blender is that you can really uh, push and use a lot of video material simultaneously in uh, in real time so you can see here the frame rate is um, staying pretty stable around 24 and all my like let's see 10 more than 10 videos are running simultaneously and i'm also recording the video so um blender is very easy going with with video textures uh, and run videos together uh i think it's in this field um not too comparable with After Effects, which uh, where you can barely run two videos simultaneously. So therefore, um, it gives you the opportunity to see and create at the same time what you are doing in real time, that you can have really the feeling of, of the movement, of the mixing, uh, of colors, and everything in real time. Um, one of the most basic things to to install, to use in Blender's video textures is uh, that you need to, in order to import your video textures easily, you need one add-on, which is uh, included in Blender's package, but not activated by default. Uh, you go by to add-ons and type here uh, image just, and this is the, the add-on you need, import image explains. Uh, when you activate this, then in your context menu, you will get by image down menu, uh, image as planes. Through this, you can just go and import a video uh, as a video material, as a video texture, just on a plane, just a regular mesh plane. Um, I have here some examples. Uh, and uh, in order to get good results, uh, you can just like, import them as an emit because if you import them with principal shader you are dependent on the light station in your scene but even then uh, you can get the real colors of it let's let's go it for the emit and import this as planes so i have here and let's go to object menu again so yeah i have here my node setting let's minimize this a little bit and to see the nodes better so you will get this this really simple node setting. One principal shader, the image texture, and the output node. But in fact, you don't need this principal shader. You can just directly connect, connect your color, color output of your texture, video texture, directly to the material output and erase this. Uh, by default, on the import, you see the import the number of the video uh, number of frames in the video which is like 25 uh, 250 in this case and it will it will run automatically um but it will not repeat it will not repeat i have here go the spec to uh, the same uh, number of frames here and if i play it you can see that um it's it's, it's playing very um in a normal speed um, but you don't have much control on it. I will show you a little trick uh, to have a better control on your video textures frame speed. So because you don't have here any options to control the speed, but you can go here and put here, just remember this number, 250, um, and you put it here one. And in this case, it doesn't play anything, but you have to put here by offset, um, an expression, a scripted expression. Um, scripted expressions are very useful things which you can input in any field which you can control also by keyframes. So instead of putting keyframes, we will put here a little formula including the frame, the word frame, which is in this case a variable, which is equal to our current frame number. So if I put hash frame, and press enter, you will see 138, which is the, the number of our current frame. So it will equal 
or frame numbers. If I play, then it will forward, will go forward. Um, in your default import, if there are here are the frame no number of the frames, and here's one just, uh, you can click cyclic in order to repeat it. But if you if you use this this setting, uh, the repeat re repetition or the looping uh, is also another input where you use modulo function which means like repeat every number of frames which in, in our case is 250 so it will repeat after 250 and um, to, to test it you can, you can give here a higher number and let's open it a little bit more uh, and if we go by default, this is like 20, 250 numbers, and then it repeats after, and you can see here, if it comes to 250, 250, and it goes back to zero because of the calculation with the modulo, 250. So it is, this is the very basic of the, um, of importing a video as a video texture. After importing it, let's minimize this, after importing it, you can do anything with this plane, uh, like, as if it is a mesh. Uh, so if you go to the edit mode, uh, you could take a corner and, and bend it. Or you can subdivide it and move the subdivision around, create like uh, maybe a perspective effect or whatever. Um, or you can even uh, uh, make a much, much more detailed subdivision. Let's, let's put a couple of subdivisions inside. And and by using the proportional editing, oh, I can really kind of sculpt all this image and move it, and it will still play. And uh, and even like uh, check it like uh, even if I'm in playing at the same time, I can play with it. This would be I don't know any other program which which will be able to do this. So of course, like this, uh, you can do not only on on planes but in every kind of mesh object. Uh, and also, I think also in, on curve objects, you can put this this material and run it also very smoothly. Um, yeah, and let's come to pixelization, our next topic. Okay, maybe delete this one, we don't need this. I prepared here the very basic setting and the pixelation setting. So let's, let's minimize it a little bit. Um, all the assets which I created here, I will upload to Gumroad and with, with a little donation, you can get all this file and all these examples together. So, I prepared here a group node of groups, but I will of course explain it, uh, which is connected to, to the texture coordinate of, of the video, uh, which is by default, actually, which is by default. If you want to put it, you can move this video or down, up and down, all these coordinates together, all the pixels on the video texture, which means the, the UV texture, the UV coordinate, you can, you can move as, as your desired. Also, I think also you can re-rotate it in different axes and also scale it in, in different axes. But the, using the pixelate node group, which I created and I will explain what is inside no, in node groups, you can actually pixelate, pixelate the whole video texture. Uh, let's play it also and pixelate it by running. So you can also, of course, animate also this option, but you can here um, change the size of the pixels or the, the number of pixels is set here. Uh, let's go in into the group uh, by using the tab. You can go into the node groups. So it is not that much complicated setting. Um, basically you use the math nodes called snap two times. Um, you separate the vector coordinate to X, Y, and Z. Z. And then uh, you use just the X and Y coordinates you use you connect them to the snap and change the the so-called increment 
So I, by default, you can see, yeah, uh, by default, you can have this increment. It is one and it is between one, zero and one. You can, you can uh, scale the pixels or put the pixels, pixels inside. I put it to, to make it easier because we need very small numbers. I put it, um, the entrance number, the input number is, is dividing one to get very small numbers. So the higher our input here, the video, uh, the pixel size input, the smaller the, the increment number will get to your input. And on top of, it, of that, um, I'm using uh, just to have square pixels because let's uh, we'll give you the chance to see this. So if I don't use this, I will have uh, non-square pixels, which are um, the, the pixel pixel ratio of the video, which is in this case uh, the HD resolution was by 1920 by 1080, and therefore let's put it back to not do wrong things here. So go back with the tab out, and if you put them, the division of these numbers, which are connected to here to this divide function are multiplying the whole setting in order to get a to get a, a smooth smooth number so i'm also like here's also another scaling um to to make things softer uh yeah exactly this is my pixel size yeah exactly uh i'm dividing using this this division this pro this um proportion of uh, height and width and multiplying it with this value, uh, with our my pixel size value, in order to get a high number, which divides one, and at the end it gets this nice pixel amount. So let's go back. So this is this one, um, but of course I can. In, in this example, I, I I'm using the same number for the input, but I could also use. Uh, separate different numbers for this. In this example, I put here the pixel amount of X and Y in different nodes. So um, I have a very high, here very high number and very low number of X, which makes straight lines. Yeah, exactly. So uh, in another example, in another example. It's you, maybe you don't see it very well. Let's, let's scale it up and play it again. So you can see the, the middle part of the video is not pixelated, but to, up to the corners, it gets more and more pixelated. This has the reason that uh, in order to, to pixelate uh, pixelated areas, to mark them, I'm using uh, another texture, which is this gradient texture. I'm giving this gradient texture, which is itself is also pixelated. And here, through a color ramp, I'm like giving the, the array of it. So you can have only the middle ones pixelated with this color ramp. And also in or other way around. So you have like kind of kind of little um like a glass loop or a land effect. So, yeah, you can see this. Um, yes, this is a, like a little bit more complicated node setting. Let's clean this a little bit. So we don't need. Uh, in another example here yet, let's also clean this one a little bit. Um, in, in this another example, um, we are mixing video with its very itself. So instead of this gradient video, I'm using to mix the gradation or the pixelation, the video itself. So the video itself is controlling with its, its hues, hue values, uh, the pixelation of it. We could also, of course also use the value, the, 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 the brightness value, but in order to control it, the pixel, pixelation. So, yeah, the darker areas more pixelated or or the bigger pixels or the other way around. The lighter areas more pixelated. 
So you can play with this, uh, with this all these options very much. And the nice thing is you can connect to every every node field a, a, a texture. Uh, here we have another example for this. Uh, without an, a video, this time there is just two two procedural textures, which is the wave texture and the noise texture. Yeah. You can uh, check the res between results actually by uh, using the node wrangler, this add-on, which is which is also by default um, installed. Not installed, but not activated. Uh, not installed, but not activated in Blender. It's called node wrangler. So it's activated. Uh, with this, you can do a couple of nice things. Um, one of them is you can just like. Uh, control and shift uh, to any any node and in order to make a preview of it in order to connect it to our output surface material to see what is in this in this case in this station happening so we could also do it what is happening here or what is happening here in this which, which stage is doing what so we could also even do this uh, in in this case x y z z uh, values are um, projected on RGB values. So here in this example, like we don't we don't need this very much actually. Uh, and I put this this last one just to have a more contrast. And um, what we have here is uh, a noise texture is sorted so called sorted by um by the by a wave texture so in the, in this previous two we, we two examples here with this uh, gradient um with this gradient shape and with this here the mixing two videos um i was not only pixelating them but also sorting sorting the values sorting is actually also very very uh, simple thing which you get just by after dividing your value to the one to your value to get this very little number you add another number to it which is also between 0 and 1 so the increment is a value between 0 and 1 so if you go much around it let's um, i will I will take this out to show you. This is the Y sorting value, which is added after dividing. So if I put it off, uh, this is so. And um, yeah, all, now all my uh, things are uh, uh, changing at the same time because my sorting uh, node is co copied to 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 everything. So your node groups, if they are copied to another shader even um, they are changing at the same time because they are just like instances of the same node so the, the node groups are instanced in in different parts so you have to uh, of course like uh, to make it single user again um, in this case look i wanted to show you this what what means this add function adding pushes the pixels in a direction in this case this this is the y value and all my pixels are pushed into into the y value but they are still this pixelated effects. They have the still effect, and and also you can see that there are some some uh, irregularities. These are because the increment of the x is coming from another another one. So I can read this. Uh, yeah, and so if if it's zero, you can have you can move the this one, and it is as you can see. If it is as far as it's, it is uh, between 0 and 1, and of course minus 1, it's moving. By 0, it is nothing. And after um, after 1, it is disappearing. It's going out of the picture. So let's put these values back. So this is what's here. And I have my value here. And also my sort sorting value of here is here so uh, we kind of lost something in this process we will 
I'm having this x value here, adding it to here. Ah, the best is like just going a couple of steps back. And having my y value connected here. And in this case, I, I'm back here. Okay, so um, our next step, we just check this these examples. We can we can push the pixels by using another texture. And now we can go to more sophisticated examples, which make it really fun. And here we have C texture, which is like I imported in the same similar way. The C, C texture is pushed again by itself. But this time it is mixed, the, the pushing factor of two, two pixel sorters are mixed. This is not necessary, but mixed by by itself again, by itself, by a by a derivation of itself, by the color ramp. So the color ramp is controlling how much how much is it's it's in, uh, it's mixed here into this is the the video itself, the coordinates of the video itself. They are coming the UV coordinates. They are coming here to the mix mix node. And in this case, I'm mixing these two by their hue. And the other one is a is a pixelated version of it. Where uh, we have a high uh, amount of pixels in in one direction. In the, in X, uh, there are some some more, much more. Can even make more. We we don't notice after ten, after hundred or so, uh, it is a bit harder. But with the with the pixel amount of of Y is very very low. Therefore, we have just like this, these two, two etaps, and and then they are mixing in this direction in a very in a very nice way. Let's play, let's play this. That the the waves of the sea, they are mixing very nicely into lines. So, and of course, in fact, uh, it was also an, a very simple video of, of waves, which I used. And in, now in the second part, for now, until now, we, we worked with shader nodes. Shader nodes. If you lose your, um, your nodes from the site, what you can do is just like press A to select all the nodes and press, press comma. Not on numpad, your point on our numpad. In this way, you will you will view everything frame, frame everything, frame selected together. So you don't lose. Sometimes if you work too much and uh, if you go build and build and then you disappear and if you go to another one, uh, the, the the view of the node area stays on the same same point. So you don't see them where where the your notes are so therefore a and comma or point numpad we will get everything that you get to have in our second part we will leave the um, shader notes and we will go now to geometry notes where because we can do also similar uh, pixelating effects in geometry notes uh, with having some more detailed control on on our pixels um, and it's a very different paradigm and therefore you can do also different things. So yeah, I have here two examples, just this one. And let's check it, select it and I go to the geometry nodes. Let's rearrange our area to have a better view. Rearrange and also let's start um, screen casting that you can see which buttons I'm pushing. So here in this example, I have I have a again a, a very uh, I subdivided the the mesh in uh, almost the same number of uh, pixels. I subdivided by one thousand nine hundred twenty, but not so much. Just tenth of it 
192 uh, parts and and also in the height 108 eight uh, parts subdivisions so then i have the square pixels which are which which equal to like some 10 more than 10000 uh, points um which are almost enough to have this pixelating effect a nice pixelating effect but in this case i am uh scaling all this all the squares let's maybe have I will check if I can have this also because if you activate in your modifier view uh, this this thing then you can see the edited version the already modified version with the geometry nodes to your mesh so if you go here then you can see let's, let's go to this some of the some of the uh, can, I can move them of course uh, or let's see oh, yeah, I can I can move them some of the of my um Paces are bigger than the others. You can see. Yeah. Um, the reason is I split split the this uh, these parts. So if in uh, in your in a normal mesh operation in edit mode. So if I would have here several mesh parts, I could split this because if you know they are connected to each other but I, if i want to split them i can use edge and uh, edge split or is it by faces trace split mm -hmm. okay usually or is it like here Right context menu, yes, split or Y. You can use Y, and if you use Y, then you have a separate thing. You can you can disconnect it? And I think also, if I split this edge or split all of them with Y, then I can have a separate part. So I can take things out with this Y function in in my edit mode if I'm like really editing meshes. But if I want to do it in geometry node setting in a in a procedural way then i use the split edge node so in this case my mesh is separated in order to have different elements and i say these elements are the faces and then i scale these elements uh, but not all of them just like having a random selection of them by using the index value this is then all the number of uh, of the of the elements and then uh, using this and value for selection and actually I don't need this uh, this one and then setting material I think I also don't need this word uh, an experiment so I just need this these values and then I can really play play with them and scale them so you can see that I can also scale them down so very small parts or scale them bigger and then you have like this, this structures so this and 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 also this the scaling axis is you can scale them maybe this in another direction and you can see that you can sort these pixels in a completely different way than um than sorting or using the shader nodes and now in another and uh, the before last example, I used a little, a little bit um, more complicated setup. I used instances. So first, I subdivided the mesh. Um, my my mesh now it is just like one piece. Um, I subdivided it to level six, and turned all these subdivision points to uh, mesh parts or all these faces to a point, and then I instances on these points. Uh, little squares. Uh, I use the grid. Um, uh, the, this one. Mesh primitive grid. Uh, instance them on these points. And uh, oh, I also don't need actually. Cleaning up a little bit before I send it to your files. And then 
I translated these instances a little bit forward to, to separate them. Here, the forward, the selected ones. But which selection? And the selection is actually, again, I'm using the image texture. So, of course, if you have the geometry nodes, the geometry nodes input doesn't include the image texture by default. Um, it, if you, of course, if you use instances, then it, it loses all its UV values and you don't use the texture. But then I use the same texture here for two things. And one of them, one of them is to control the sizes or, or the selection of which, which, which texture points will be selected. Let's play it. We see some uh, the, the the brightest ones are getting selected and they are scaled. If I go here, different ones are selected. If I use with uh, this function, with I, then the smaller uh, the the darker ones are selected and scaled. So, and I I use them to to translate them a little bit forward, as well as scaling them in. Uh, in the Z axis that we have, they are a little bit elongated. So in this way, in this case, um, the sky and also some some part of them, some part of the waves which are highlighted with with the foam, with the white foam, they are elongated in the Z direction in uh, eight times. And they're a little bit. I scaled them the X values a little bit down to have a nicer effect. But if this would be one, then it would be also compared to but it was it's better to see them in this way let's do it like maybe 7 5 yeah or maybe even a little smaller I, it was a real nice that to have this uh the separation between them okay but the other ones are not uh not touched actually okay and then the uh, i use the video texture also for another thing which is this is this is here for this, for the selection part the, the, to select the, uh, the the bright parts of it, but I also do use the same image texture to to capture the at attribute of it, the positions of them, uh, as a, a, the, the color information of them, and then I export this. Uh, it's it's not really exporting, but I'm sending this attribute to shader nodes, and then. Uh, to a to a to a material, and I use this this attribute in a material, which is C instance. I will show it, and then I use the C instance material back here. After realizing all the instances, I set the material on these instances, and then they get the the color of this area of this video texture. So this each this all these parts are really little instances which are realized, and then they get this this material. Now we can go back to the shading. Let's again I have to re restart the screencast every time else it doesn't work. And if I go to the to to material of here, I I use the same material. This this we don't need. This all we don't need. I use this this color information which is coming from from this attribute. Uh, I put it, it on the surface. It is just a color, and all the uh, all the geometry parts they get this color information and they're uh, homogeneously have this specific color from the video texture and now we come to our last last part last example uh, this is another shader mixture where used uh, in two two uh, the the video textures here. It is, let's let's play it. It's, um, it's a very nice one. There are the, the waves are coming, but the waves in in themselves are modifying themselves um, through a noise texture. So this is this noise texture, and here, this is my um, this is modifying the. You know, the same bot the video uh the video at the end which is also pixelated in uh by the way not here so we don't see it's very good so here we can see on top of it it comes and um and just uh, the original 
is mixed with a noise texture. Uh, is mixed. The, the the original is original coordinates are mixed with the uh, with the mapped coordinates, and these mapped coordinates are again used for another video texture, which which mixes. This is like the, if it's not mixed, which are mixing in order to play with the snap value. So the here the snap value. If I don't use this. These are the snap values going up and down, but I can use also the, mul uh, the multiple is just like to, to make it a little bit better, to a little bit higher. But I use the video texture in order to play with the snap value of the pixelated texture. So it's a little bit long sentence, but I think you get what I mean. And you can play with uh, with all these uh, all these notes in a way like uh, like uh, as if you are an alchemist. And you are mixing things and trying to find out what is the best option, and and suddenly discovering things which are you were not looking for, um, and then you can really get very exciting results, which uh, which you maybe even don't get with with all these beautiful, very powerful AI uh, image generation tools. These are things which you can't get with them because. This, these things are really purely based on what you are doing and how you are perceiving and how you are going through this uh, all this adventure uh, by using your images. And of course, the other thing is like you can capture your own videos or images or animate uh, new videos in Blender, which you can again uh, mix here. So thank you for watching. Uh, as I said, uh, for a little donation, you can get this little file. I will upload it on Gumroad and um, I'm happy for likes and uh, followings my, my channel. Thank you very much and see you on the next video.